When has a gut feeling saved your life? When I was around 18, I was on a back road with some friends and a girl I didn't know was driving really fast. Now, I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie, and I have always enjoyed a calculated risk in the name of a good time, but on this occasion I told her to either slow the duck down, or let me out. I literally had to start screaming at her, before she listened and slowed down. A week later she crashed on that same stretch of road at 90 miles per hour, killing her, and the three passengers in her car. My now wife and I did the long distance thing in college, and I planned on doing my normal routine to visit her, leave Chicago land in the morning, get to her early afternoon on Friday. Well I'm closing my store on Thursday night, and get a feeling I should leave that night. So I said back quote duck it, and left that night. A little after lunch on Friday, tornado sirens go off. I don't think anything of it until I head back home Sunday, and drive through a town about half hour north of her. It got lit up by the tornado. I quickly realize that I had left at my normal time. I would have been smack dab in the middle of tornado. A pain in the lungs when I inhaled. I've never been stabbed, don't know what it's like, but the pain should have been equal to it, if not worse. It had happened before, years ago. Some hot water in the shower and the pain was gone. My wife insisted on going to her. I insisted on hot water. I feel like we should go and see a doctor, she had said. I was diagnosed with pulmonary embolism on both lungs. Doctor said one or two more hours and you were gone. So yeah, I owe my wife one. Few years ago I was at a bar with a couple of friends. All was good, we were drinking and having fun. All of a sudden, we heard this discussion taking place just a couple of tables from us. Two guys decided to have a shouting slash threat match. I stopped everything to pay attention to them. My friends were making fun of me, saying I was gossipy. One of the guys in the discussion got up and left. Immediately after he left I told my friends we had to go. Now, let's go now. They didn't get why I was like that, but I'm their friend since forever. They reluctantly agreed. We went to a different bar in a different neighborhood, but I couldn't take my mind off of those two guys. The next day, the news were talking about a bar fight. Apparently the guy who got up went home, grabbed a gun, and came back for a drive-by. Killed four people in the process five. I was taking my mom to a follow-up appointment for back surgery the month before. The freeway was closed due to a car accident and life flight was called to transport the people injured in the accident. The highway patrol was funneling everyone off of the freeway to the right side exit. I had the strongest feeling we needed to move to the left farthest lane, so I did. No more than a minute after I moved over, a garbage truck came barreling down the freeway and crashed into the car that was in front of us in the other lane so fast that it lifted the front end of the truck and it landed on top of the car. We were in a tiny sports car that would have crumpled like a tin can under the weight of a garbage truck and definitely would have killed my mom and me in a second sick. Lump in my right breast 43 years old. Clean mammogram 5 months earlier. I just knew. 4 different doctors told me it was nothing and to come back in a year. I did not and found a fifth. Yeah, I had to argue my way into being diagnosed with a rare and aggressive form of breast cancer 7. I almost got kidnapped once. I was like 23 or so. I was walking down my street at a little after dusk. I saw a van approaching a little ahead. No lights on. Didn't think much of it due to the time of day. The van slowed down and almost started creeping as I was approaching this part of the sidewalk which had a tall solid wall fence to a community. This gave me some pause in that quick moment. For me to keep walking, I'd have to go between the wall and the van. In the little time it took me to take a couple of steps, and as the van was getting close, I noticed that the side door was slowly sliding open. The one thought in my mind was, why isn't the light turning on inside the van? When you open the door of a vehicle, the light should come on inside it. Unless you deliberately switch that off. And I just ran to the median, I ran in front of the van, and across the street, because if they're gonna have some use of road kill me, have at it, but they're not getting me in one glorious piece. Immediately, the van took off like someone lit it on fire. 
from a slow crawl to full speed. As I looked after it to see the plates, I noticed it had no plates. And still no lights. I called the police, of course. They sent cars out and didn't find the van. I never had anything like this happen again, and I'm just an ordinary person, so I don't suspect it was targeted. I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time 8. It didn't happen to me, but was told by my mom. When she was pregnant with my older sister, her and her family decided to go hiking in the mountains. On the day of the hike she suddenly felt discomfort and uncomfortable. So she stayed behind, while the rest of her family went for the hike. Her family got lost, and if it wasn't for my mom staying behind, they wouldn't have gotten help. Keep in mind that there was no cell phones back then, so if you got lost, it was a lot harder to contact rescue to come find you 9. Went to go catch the bus, saw the bus about to pull out from the stop, and I could have made it if I ran. Something told me not to catch it and just wait for the next one, so I did. Caught the next bus half an hour later. Now, I usually sit at the back of the bus on the driver's side, so that's where I sat. A little way into the journey, traffic was slowing, and we got to the cause of it. A lorry had crashed into the bus I had missed, right into the back on the driver's side. Had I caught that bus, I wouldn't be here. Still gives me chills after 6 years 10. My ex-husband had a friend who I just didn't like, although I could never explain why. He was very handsome, always smiling, very respectful speech. My ex used to give me shit for expressing my feelings about this guy. I was never rude to him when he'd stop by, but I did have trouble hiding my creeped out vibe. Fast forward to 3 years later. Guy is convicted of indecent liberties and statutory rape of his girlfriend's daughter who is 12 years old and another 14 year old female 11. I almost killed this guy because he walked out onto the highway. I slowed down because I saw brake lights when there should have been steady flow traffic. I barely had time to hit my brakes and was maybe 8 feet away from him. I rolled down my window and asked him WTF is wrong with him. He just kept walking, got run over literally minutes after 12. I'm a bouncer. Came across a shady individual who had a gun on his person. Asked him to leave the weapon outside in his vehicle. Made a huge stink about it, but left it in his car. For some reason, I still felt like it wasn't enough. So I watched him closely all night. He got trashed, and then towards closing he decided to get in an argument with some Australian guys. They were all talking about taking the fight outside. One Australian guy already had his shirt off. I asked them to at least take it outside, but I followed closely. Once outside, the guy bent over to tie his shoe and I realized he had an ankle holster for a second weapon. As he was pulling the gun out I rushed him, and we fought over the gun. The gun went off, and hit a lady in her leg. Finally wrestled the gun out, and put him in cuffs with the help of other security. True, a lady got hit that night, but I have a feeling, if I hadn't been watching that guy closer somebody in the Australian group would have died. Weirdest part about the story is the lady who got hit in the leg didn't stick around for the police. She ran off after getting hit. Might have had a warrant or something, but it didn't seem like a life-threatening shot. Drunk people are weird that. I was staying at a friend's house out in the country. He was asleep in another room. I was dozing off with his gigantic pitbull Lizzy Bell, sweet girl. In the middle of the night I'm awoken by sounds outside, like scrabbling. Izzy leaps up too, looks at me then the back door and growls. My friend at the time had a young daughter, 4 or 5, so I immediately think of her. I grab the nearest weapon which is a fire poker and go to open the door as Izzy is beside me seemingly ready for a fight. But it didn't feel right. I instead bar the door best I can and creep to a window looking out. Outside is a gigantic bear. So big it could easily rip my head off and it has a few cubs in tow. I watch as it ambles off. I'm pretty sure that if I had charged out of that door as I originally intended me and Izzy would not be here today. I think I was 10 or 11 and I was reorganizing my room, moving books and stuff around. I had been working on it all day, and during the process I moved a bookshelf on top of a dresser, 
to give me more space and loaded it up with two encyclopedia sets and a bunch of other books. I ended up moving my bed parallel to the dresser and passed out from working on my room all day. I woke up a little while after 4 and was contemplating getting a glass of water and moving my bed because it didn't look safe under the bookshelf. I finally got out of my bed and walked towards the door, maybe 2-3 two to three steps and boom, 1994 Northridge earthquake hit. The bookshelf instantly fell on my bed. I don't know if it would have killed me, but it would have really smashed me up. I was at a pub party being held for my boyfriend's father, but I had a headache that wasn't going away. I had been drinking, but I wasn't drunk. I was just feeling like crap. So I made my excuses and left to walk home alone as I didn't want to ruin his night with his dad. It was a 10 minute walk, if that, from the pub to our house, and it wasn't properly dark yet. I walked down the street and passed a man sitting on a wall drinking a beer. A minute after I passed, I heard the bottle smash and then footsteps a little while back. Nothing unusual, it was a main road and there was another pub further along but something in my gut was screaming something was wrong. So I hurriedly walked to the pub and stopped outside to ask the smokers for a light and a chat as I smoked. I watched him pass by me and then stare at me from across the street for an uncomfortable amount of time. With my gut screaming at me, I asked a bouncer working the doors if he could order me a taxi. A few weeks later, while in the town center, I saw a mugshot of the same dude wanted for rape. 